Hello and welcome. This is Rufo Monger, and I have another quick Street Fighter 6 guide for you today. And it's all about stopping cross ups. So, in Street Fighter, there's going to be a lot of jumping, right? That, that's the name of the game. And how well you mitigate those jumps is basically, in a lot of ways, how well you're going to do in Street Fighter, right? And sometimes it's as simple as you see the jump, you do the uppercut, right? And of course, you know, not necessarily, not everyone has the uppercut, but a lot of characters, they can also do just do stuff like, you know, crouch heavy punch or whatever. It's very easy to stop obvious jumps, but some jumps aren't necessarily as obvious. And one of those is the cross up. So the cross up, in case you're somehow unaware, hits behind you. And it's not quite as easy to anti-air or deal with. Say if you go for that crouch heavy punch, whoops, you got hit. You're gonna get comboed. Say you go for that Shoryuken, whoops, you missed and you're gonna land, they're gonna get a full punish, and it's just not gonna work out for you so well, right? Now, it's not as difficult for some people. Guile, his flash kick is just charge down, hit up, and kick, right? So if you suspect you're gonna get crossed up, all you have to do is just wait for it to switch sides, and it'll automatically basically go for the right side for you, right? Now, of course, naturally, if you do it a bit too early, well, something like that's gonna happen, right? It's not gonna work out in your favor, but for someone like Guile, all you have to do, if you expect it's coming, just wait a split second longer and do it. It'll automatically side switch for you. Of course, that's Guile, that's not everybody. So, well, let's talk about something that's a bit more applicable to the rest of the cast, and that comes in play in the cross cut technique. So the technique I'm about to show you is applicable to everyone with a traditional uppercut. Just, you know, four down, down four in motion applicable to everyone with an uppercut, and also a few other characters, and I'll give you examples as well, that are a little bit more non-standard. But what we're doing here is we're making the input buffer in the game work in our favor. So the uppercut again, once again, forward, down, down, forward, punch, right? And then you get the uppercut, and Street Fighter being Street Fighter, sometimes you can get some, you know, non-standard motions in like say forward, down, forward, forward. That will also count as an uppercut. You don't even need a true down, right? But we're using the inputs to our benefit. So now, instead of getting the uppercut and getting this, whiffing, and then getting blown up, what we're gonna do is get something like this. And then I correctly uppercutted Cami on the other side, right? It did not whiff like it is if I just inputted it traditionally and normally. So how is that working? So basically what I'm doing is I'm entering a half circle backwards. So forward, down, forward, down, down, back, back. So just like that, right? And I'm doing that right as Cami will cross over my head. And then as you can see, I get my sure you can off. So why does this work this way? Basically, when you're switching sides, like if you're facing right, turning left, or facing left, turning right, the game will do its best to mirror the inputs you already put in, just for the sake of well, balance and buffering, all that kind of stuff. So basically, it's gonna flip the inputs for you. So right before Cami crosses over my head and I'm hitting forward, down, to back, and all that kind of stuff, right? The original forward to down, once Cami does cross over my head, the game flips the buttons, flips the inputs basically, and it says, no, okay, you entered it on the other side. So since it's flipping the input, that forward, like that original part of that half circle motion I'm doing here, now counts as the correct directions on the other side. So a forward, a down forward, and then all I need is another forward, right? Part of that half circle back, and then it counts it as the uppercut. Simple as that. So it's a bit of nonsense with the input buffer basically, but basically the game, as far as the game's considered, this is a true uppercut. And this works this way in other Street Fighters as well. So long story short, whenever you expect a cross up coming your way, just input half circle backwards and hit whatever punch, or you know, it could be an EX, it could be whatever, like, you know, whatever works for you, right? Input it that way. And the game will automatically basically jumble the inputs together and say, nope, this was a dragon punch. And then go from there. This basically gives you the fastest possible uppercut timing while switching the other side. So everyone who has a traditional uppercut motion can do something like this. Quick example here with Cami, just so you can see. Quick example here with Lily, just so you can see. Once again, just walk forward, half circle back, and by the time they've crossed up on the other side, hit your button and you'll get your uppercut style move. Now, what about the characters that don't have the usual frame one anti-air dragon punch style move, right? So like Menno, her EX wheel kick has some level of anti-air invincibility, right? But it is not that motion. It is just a regular quarter circle forward. So how do we make that technique work for us? 
we don't quite have the easy input fluid motion we can do. We're actually gonna do the same input we always did, just quarter circle forward and the two kicks to get the X version. But what we're gonna do here is enter that quarter circle forward motion and then delay and then hit two kicks. And there you go. So I entered the quarter circle forward motion before she crossed over my head. So that is as normal, right? But what I did is I did the slight delay and then when I hit the two kicks, she's already over my head. So the input buffer reads that and flips my inputs for me and allows me as Manon to just basically wheel kick her on the other side before she gets her cross up off. One more time here in slow-mo, just so you can see it and appreciate it. So you just do the same motion you always did, just delay hitting the button press. So for non-Dragon Punch characters like Manon, this technique also works. It's a little bit more difficult. The actual true cross cut motion is much easier and more forgiving, honestly, uh, as it has multiple layers of redundancy on it. But still, this does work for characters without the traditional Dragon Punch. The idea of the cross cut also works with charge moves. As long as you have charge, you can basically charge back for Honda because we don't want to use EX headbutt in this situation. Charge back and then hit back and two punches and we'll get the EX headbutt. Let me show you an example. Right there. So the whole time I never hit forward ever for the sumo headbutt. I hit charge down back and then I hit back. So once again, once you have the charge, the game knows you have the charge, right? And once she crosses over your head, just hit back and two punches and you'll get your EX sumo headbutt. So this kind of technique works with a lot of moves, not just the uppercut. Once again, it's best with uppercuts, but you can apply this logic to just about anything. If you think they're gonna cross up, there's a lot more you can do than just deal with it, right? A lot more than, okay, I blocked the cross up, deal with whatever buttons you're gonna hit or maybe whatever gimmicks you're gonna go for, right? Take the initiative back because you don't have to be a victim in these scenarios. Like once again, you know, some people have it easy. Chun-Li is just down, down and hit the button. So wherever they're gonna be, as long as you just hit down, down, hit button, you don't even have to worry about this stuff, right? Same with flash kick, just tiny delay. But for other people, you gotta work a little bit harder and this technique will definitely help you out. So very powerful technique. It will definitely save your life. And naturally too, any additional sassy things, like say going into a level three, anything you would cancel your defensive move to to stop the cross up, you can still do it just fine, don't worry, right? So this is very strong. This is what will allow you to defend yourself with special moves in situations where like, you know, say the crouch heavy punch normal would kind of always lose out because people who have to defend themselves with normals do struggle with cross ups. So know how the input buffer works, know what moves you can defend yourself with and you'll have a grand old time. And other than that, well, I guess that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Street Fighter.